ora koutou katoa. Um, as has been explained, I'm Siobhan Leachman. I'm a Wikimedian from New Zealand. I contribute to Wikidata, as well as English Wikipedia and the Wikimedia Commons. Um, I'd like to thank the Wikimedia Foundation, Wikimedia Deutschland, and in particular the organising committee of the Wikidatacon um, for enabling me to attend this conference and present today. Now in this presentation, I want to tell you about the vital role I think Wikidata and Wikidata editors can play in servicing notable women. I want to take you through my workflows, ensuring that um, these under-acknowledged women and their work can be added to Wikidata. I want to show how the curation of data on these women can assist with the creation of citable secondary sources. This in turn can encourage and enable the creation of Wikipedia articles about these women in a variety of languages. Now I'm sure you're aware that Wikipedia editors are working hard to write more articles on women. Examples of projects focusing on this type of work are uh, the Women in Red project or the Women project, um, sorry, Wiki project Women Scientists. But one of the main hurdles I've experienced when attempting to write about women in Wikipedia is the notability criteria. When writing articles on women, I've found this criteria can be a challenge to achieve. I've discovered women are less likely to be written about in citable secondary sources, and this has particularly been brought home to me when I've attempted to write about women, um, articles about women in The Scientists pre-1950. However, just like in our wiki projects, there are plenty of researchers and creators of secondary sources out in the wider world attempting to change this. They just need to be pointed in the direction of these women, and I believe Wikidata can be that arrow. Now yes, um, like Wikipedia, Wikidata has a notability criteria that must be met, but this criteria is a much lower bar. I'm advocating using Wikidata to get a foot in the wiki door for underrepresented groups. By adding these women to Wikidata, editors can then make it easier for the data about them to be collated, curated and linked. In doing so, editors make it easier for researchers and writers, the generators of these vital secondary sources, to find these women and then to use the data to guide their research. Once coverage reaches the Wikipedia notability threshold, Wikipedia editors can then create articles on these underrepresented people. Now I want to show you how I put this into practice to take you through us how I started on this data journey and to give you examples of the collaborations I and others like me have managed to forge enabling this type of work to be done. Now I tend to focus on data about women in the field of natural history. These women scientific illustrators, collectors of specimens as well as women scientists such as botanists and zoologists. I became interested in these women when I started volunteering for the Smithsonian Transcription Centre. I helped transcribe natural history specimens or scientific um, handwritten field notebooks. And in doing so, I frequently came across women, many of whom had contributed specimens to the Smithsonian or had undertaken scientific research. At the same time, I was volunteering for the Biodiversity Heritage Library, or BHL. Now, BHL is the world's largest open access digital library on bio, of bio, biodiversity literature and archives. Much of the biodiversity literature they host is historic and therefore in the public domain. They've got an extensive collection of scientific illustrations in Flickr. So I would tag those images with not just tax, taxonomic names, but as well as illustrator tags. That metadata is in turn ingested and stored into BHL. The hope is to use those tags to be, become searchable at some point in the future on BHL's website. But as an added bonus, many of these tags have been incorporated into Wiki Commons um, as a result of those Flickr files being uh, bulk uploaded by other Wiki Commons editors. It was while transcribing with the Smithsonian I met and started collaborating with another volunteer, Michelle Marshall. Both of us were avid taggers of BHL images, and while doing this work, both Michelle and I enthousi were enthusiastically encouraged by Grace Constantino, the BHL Outreach and Communications Manager. And while tagging, we would again come across women, so many women, amazing women, about whom there appeared little known or written. Some of these women would be illustrating multiple articles, books, and scientific publications. Others would be writing the books or articles, amassing collections of specimens, or having species named after them. 
both Michelle and I were really keen on making um, known more about these women, but there was very little about them on the internet. Every once in a while, there'd be a woman who had significant courage and uh, coverage, enough so that there was a Wikipedia article created about them. But this was an exception rather than the rule. This lack of coverage was frustrating to both of us. And as a result, I became keen on learning how to edit Wikipedia. Both the folk in the Smithsonian and BHL were extremely encouraging. They too were keen on addressing this issue of underrepresented women and wanted to highlight notable women in their collections via various wiki projects. So both Michelle and I started researching, me with the aim of writing Wikipedia articles, her with the aim of writing blog posts and enriching the BHL Instagram account. Now, on the rare occasion, we managed to find enough uh, sources and references to get these women into English, over the English Wikipedia notability criteria, I'd actually write an article. But as I've explained, this tended to be the exception rather than the rule. Historically, much of these women's illustration work was not regarded at the time of their creation as being worthy of comment. At most, they received a passing remark in the reviews of the publication or perhaps an acknowledgement by the author of the work. This lack um, results them in being overlooked by library catalogues, and they and their contributions were simply not recorded. They created um, scientific illustrations, so didn't tend to exhibit in art galleries. The art was created to enhance the scientific publication and wasn't treated as a standalone work worthy of critique and public display. It was therefore very rare to find enough sources to get these women or artists over the notability hurdle. But we tried. Working together, Michelle and I began researching these women and gathering our information into a Google spreadsheet. Often we'd track down enough data to work out who they were, the works they contributed to, and who they worked for. BHL recently enabled a full text search, which has significantly improved our ability to find information on them. We'd search for, and if we were lucky, find external identifiers, such as the BHL Creator ID, or the Stuttgart Scientific Illustrated Database ID, or if we were really lucky, a VIAF ID. However, there was no guarantee an external database identifier would exist. So we'd tag their plates in Flickr, collate our research on these women in our spreadsheets, and then wait for more books and articles and institution blogs and research to be generated. For me, getting them into Wikipedia was the gold standard, but I could stretch the notability criteria only so far. My first Wikipedia article on a woman botanist was nominated for deletion, and ever since that experience, I've been extremely careful about ensuring I did everything possible to meet the notability criteria. But I was actively looking for ways to make our work more impactful and effective. Now, at this point, I know you what you're thinking. What about Wikidata? And I completely agree. As soon as I discovered Wikidata, I took the leap and started editing. But again, unfortunately, I came up against the Wikidata notability criteria. Early on, I had an, an item deleted due to my failure to meet even the Wikidata notability criteria. I was having to meet even that low bar. Um, but this was all part of my learning by mistakes, and I soon adapted my workflow to allow for this. I realised I could ensure these women met the Wikidata notability criteria by creating at least one valid Wikisite link. So my workflow started with me creating a Wikicommons category page for these women and then manually adding this category to her illustrations. The illustrations that had been previously uploaded from the BHL Flickr feed into Wikicommons by other editors. Once the category page was created, I would then create a Wikidata item for that woman, including that category in the item. I'd then begin to collate all the information and research we'd found out about that particular woman. I would auto-generate a creator page in Wikicommons via that Wikidata item. I'd improve the structured data of the scientific art in Wikicommons by adding the creator markup to each of her images. And I believe this assists with the structured data on commons efforts as it links the Wikidata item to the artist and to the work in, her, in commons. I'd like to emphasise this was a manual process. I wasn't working from an established data set. There is no established data set for these women that I can find. I would also use the reference section of the Wikidata statements, not just to reference the statements themselves, 
but also with an eye to help collate all the links we discovered during our research. I wanted to leave a research trail, making it easier for me and others like me to find these links and then write either secondary sources or, if appropriate, a Wikipedia article on these women. Obviously, if external identifiers existed, I wanted to include them. Again, to my disappointment, despite the prestige of the works they were illustrating, many of these women were not listed in external databases. I would always check via the Virtual International Authority File database. But from my personal experience, there appears to be a bias against illustrators, no matter what their gender. I admit this is anecdotal, because I've unable to find any research um, to support this, but VIAF would often list the author of the historic publication, but not the illustrator. And this would be even the case even if the illustrations made up a large proportion of the work, or the woman was thanked profusely on the dedication page. I would also check the Stuttgart Scientific Illustrators database. Now, this is one of the most comprehensive databases for scientific artists. Sometimes the woman would be in there, but sometimes not. Although a fabulous starting point, this database wasn't as comprehensive as I needed. But the wonderful thing about it was how responsive its creator, the history department of the University of Stuttgart, was to emails. Both Michelle and I would write to them, including our research on particular women, uh, women, women illustrators, asking for these women to be included. Again, there is a threshold to this. I certainly wouldn't write to them unless I had reasonable supporting evidence to justify their inclusion. But the information they needed to generate an external identifier was definitely less than what was needed to do a Wikipedia article. Folk in charge of this database were very grateful for our input, and once our research was confirmed by them, they would add these women to their database and then would generate an external identifier. They were also able to access resources that neither Michelle nor I had access to. Often more data was added on these women in the DSI database as a result of their further research. A Wikidata property had already been created for this database, and so once awarded, it was an identifier I could then add to the woman's Wikidata item. Now, Michelle and I also contacted the BHL about these women. This is where our collaborative relationship with Grace came to the fore. Grace would encourage us to submit a request that the woman's name be added to the BHL catalogue record. This is a more convoluted process than it might appear. BHL metadata is sourced from numerous contributing institutions. Since it was a cataloguing change, the BHL protocol required that the change be submitted as a change request to the BHL cataloguing group for review and final approval. So again, to obtain the change to the catalogue and the subsequent external identifier, it wasn't an easy rubber stamp process. We had to back up our request with sources and proof in order for the catalogue to be changed. However, because we were doing this relatively frequently, the catalogue gr group became used to our requests and were very appreciative of our efforts. If the necessary criteria was satisfied, the institutions were prepared to edit their metadata and in do so create yet another external identifier, the BHL Creator ID. At around the same time we were undertaking this work, BHL has, in its intern program, was collaborating with other Wikidata editors. The BHL resident, um, Katie Meeker, was working with Andy Mabbitt, uh, trialling adding BHL creator IDs to Wikidata. The original test case was a thousand um, names into the mix and match tool, but it was subsequently the whole creator data, data set was uploaded into mix and match, allowing the matching of BHL data set to Wikidata items. This data set is huge and continues to be worked on by editors today. Due to the lack of resources, unfortunately BHL um, can't continue Katie's work in Wikidata, but they are very encouraging of folk reusing their data and their collections in wiki projects. Now, editors have also approved several BHL Wikidata properties, not just for the creator ID, but also the bibliographic ID, page ID and item ID. And as a result, it's now possible to link these women illustrators to their works via Wikidata. Obtaining a creator ID and therefore a Wikidata item can ensure a cascade of linked open data on them that can raise the visibility of these women to researchers. 
slowly I began to feel we were making real difference in surfacing these women. At least now when folk Googled them, the Wikidata item would appear and images that they had created would show up in the image feed. Our research, tags, blogs, Wikidata items and external identifiers brought about by our requests were all coming together, making these women much more easier to discover. Grace had already been using our tagging work in the BHL social media feeds to highlight their illustrations in, in their collections. Member institution librarians were writing blogs on these women and raising their visibility to a variety of audiences. These edited, well-researched researched, and referenced blogs were a definite step in the ladder towards obtaining citable sources for Wikipedia articles. But our work really came to the fore when BHL held their Her Natural History, a celebration of women in natural history campaign. This was a multi-institutional, multi-platform campaign to raise awareness and to celebrate the contributions of women to natural history. This campaign resulted in numerous outcomes, many of which had a direct impact on the richness of the metadata available on these women. So the BHL cataloging group added more female contributors to the BHL catalogue, generating more external identifiers. More images by the women were added to the Flickr feed, and these were either in the public domain or openly licensed, so were able to be uploaded into Wikicommons. Numerous blog posts were written by the employees of the member institutions. Some of these blogs used the research Michelle and I had undertaken as a starting point, picking it up and running with it. These blogs often resulted in the discovery of new resources and sources of information that assisted in pushing some of the women over the notability threshold for a Wikipedia article. During the campaign, there were also three Wikimedia workshops. The Wikimedia District of Columbia ran a workshop concentrating on generating and improving Wikipedia articles on these women. Two additional work workshops were organised by Esther Jackson and jointly hosted by the New York Botanic Garden and the Wikimedia New York City. The first workshop focused on adding tags to the BHL Flickr feed, and the second workshop focused on editing Wikidata and Wikicommons. These events made use of research than tagging that Michelle and I had undertaken in the preceding years. Work lists were generated from both the spreadsheets Michelle and I had created, as well as from Wikidata items that I and along with other editors had helped create. And this campaign, I think, shows how effective Wikidata can be in assisting with the interlinking of knowledge. The Wikidata items became a leaping off point, providing a framework enabling research to be collated and, and, to, and writing to commence. Now this is just one example of a collaboration that can improve linked open data on these women. Once these women have a presence in Wikidata, the item itself can be put to use. An example of this is women natural history specimen collectors. Many under-acknowledged women contributed to scientific knowledge, collecting specimens, and these are held in museums in Herberia. As more and more of these collections are digitised, more of the collectors are coming out of the woodwork. There are now sites being developed to assist scientists getting re the recognition they deserve from their fieldwork and collecting. The site I've recently been utilising is Bloodhound Tracker. It uses the ORCID ID or the Wikidata item to link the collector to their collected specimen via the Global Biodiversity Information Facility, or GBIF. Collection information is a rich vein, on, uh, rich vein of data on early women scientists, particularly as at that time they'd been unable to publish works or join scientific societies due to the social norms of the day. Wikidata can be used to collate information on these women, linking the information um, held on them from archives, libraries and museums, or to the scientific literature based on the specimens they've collected or the species that have been named after them. Once the Wikidata item is created and sufficient metadata has been added to it, the Bloodhound Tracker site will then automatically ingest details about those women into its site. Contributors can help those women claim their collections, enriching not just the linked open data, but ensuring these women get the credit for their vital work. But again, Wikidata notability criteria can be a challenge. If the women collected significantly but didn't contribute either to the published record or as an illustrator, it can be difficult to hurdle the notability criteria for Wikidata. However, as more and more libraries, archives, museums and genealogi sorry, genealogical databases are gaining Wikidata external identifiers, it's becoming easier for these women to become notable for the purposes of Wikidata and then use Wikidata to link them to their works. 
I believe similar workflows to what I've outlined can be used for other under underrepresented groups. By actively working to achieve the notability criteria for Wikidata and then expanding the Wikidata items to highlight the contributions of underrepresented people, it's, it's possible to improve their visibility. This in turn assists with the generation of secondary sources and creates a virtuous cycle of information creation, sharing and linking. By being proactive and collaborative, it's possible to work towards eliminating underrepresentation. Thank you. Have you found any publication in which all of the um, all of the illustrations actually need their own item? I think there will be. There definitely is. But um, that if I went down that rabbit hole, I you know it, I've got to stop somewhere. And I'm just trying to concentrate on the women. But yes, there are there are there are classics of bi um, biodiversity literature that not only should have an item for um, the, the book itself, but also for each illustration. I mean, Elizabeth Gould immediately springs to mind. Every piece of art that she I ever did. I would just say Maria Sibylla. Yeah, Maria. yep, yep, yep. She's a classic too. James Heald. Um, while you've been working on this, do you think that the way the notability criteria have been being applied has changed? Is there a drift in a good direction? Yes, I do think it has. I think I have, and other than that first item being, I mean, I admit it was partially my mistake. I did the item and I didn't have any external identifiers and it seemed the, because of the lack of the information I provided, I am not surprised it got deleted. Now I'm more experienced. Um, but saying that, I'm pretty sure I could put the same thing in nowadays and it wouldn't get deleted. I actually do think it has improved. Yeah. Different question. Um, I've seen on your, your Twitter sometimes you've found women's work credited to their husbands. Oh, God, Would yes. you say a bit more about that? Um, okay, yeah. There's a whole problem both... In specifically what gets me having to be peeling myself off the ceiling with rage is when um, the women botanists go out and collect and they're known, known under their, um, their married name and then they put their specimens into uh, the herbaria and the herbaria have a database, they transcribe the names but they don't have a space in their database for the vital important misses. And so what happens is is that the the... Always, if it's pre-1950 and the guy's known for being prolific, check his wife. Because most of the time, either she's typing and helping him produce his scientific papers or she's out there collecting with him. Yes, that's a, a definite problem that I have been raising with a lot of the herbaria and they just keep saying we don't, you know, our database doesn't have a place for the missus. And I say find a place because it's important. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What other domains would you copy this to? Because you're now doing it for a, spe a very specific subject. Uh, yeah. What comes to mind? Um, I, I personally, yeah, it's a good question. I hadn't, I think right, anything where people get disappeared, where it's, it's, they're not credited for their work, and it could be, it tends to be where they get lost. So something historic, and, and the data just isn't linked. For me, women are the classic example. But I also think if there's, for example, um, in New, one that does spring to mind is um, uh, artists in New Zealand, Māori artists, for example, who, don't, who get um, acknowledged through oral history, but there are no written works. And the, so the scholarship is, um, could possibly be a problem later on down the track. Uh, I think that was a, a group that's ripe for using this type of work to try and get identifiers for them, to make them more notable, to get them into Wikidata, so that then researchers are pointed towards them and can start doing the research needed to rediscover them. Yeah. Okay, so I do a lot with women artists. 
And what I found, apart from the married name thing, mm. is they also tend to stay local, so they don't mm. move and mm. cross mm. borders. And it turns out notability is very highly correlated with the number of borders you cross in your lifetime. Right. Yeah. Um, to tell you the truth, I actually find that a benefit. It's much easier to disambiguate someone if they don't shift. If they've been in one place, you can then find the database, like the births or deaths or marriages database, and you can work out on the basis of their address or you can, you can find them a lot easier if they don't shift. It's when they shift and they change from maiden name to married name that it can get really difficult. Yeah. Yeah, just adding to the question that was uh, asked earlier, in what field you could use this, if it's a case of where people are disappearing or mm. not visible, mm. wouldn't that for women, well, in my opinion, <laughs> that would mean like everywhere. Yeah. Um, yeah. I work on, one of the things I work on is Delphware Pottery mm. Uh, mm. workshops, mm. and that was an official um, job yes. in the 17th century. And when the potter died, mm. there needed to be a new uh, potter that was uh, inscribed in the, what do you call it, the, the well, the official book, the guild book. Yeah. Um, unless his wife could take over. Ah. And then she could take over without that diploma, or whatever yes. you want to call it. Yes, Sometimes for years. Yeah. And I'm... And who work would be attributed to her husband? Yes. Yes. Because the, the pottery is always uh, attributed to the owner. Yes. And even though there there's cases, and they're like one line in, in yeah. the official encyclopedia. Yeah, this doesn't surprise where, me. Where the women are like taking care of the business for yeah. like 10 years. Yeah. Say, for example, their husband uh, for two years. But all the pottery items would be marked. With you know, I, the I owner, think this so is a really good example yeah. of how Wikidata can actually be used. Yes to surface these women and have something to hang the scholarship off so that then eventually the more people who just you know who don't struggle to try and find the base information can then start the research and the in-depth research that's required to surface these women wikidata i think is the easy way to have a framework and something to a skeleton to hang the the bare data that you've got on to en to enable that research to happen yeah uh, I'm sorry, we are uh, out of time. Uh, we have the lunch break now. So. Okay. Thank you. Well, come Thank talk to me if anyone else has any questions. <laughs>